Today we're taking the train from Sapporo in Hokkaido to Matsushima, a small town on the coast near Sendai. We spent one night here to see one of Japan's top scenic views and I'll show you that in a separate video. Today I'll take you with me on the train and then I'll show you the fanciest hotel I've stayed in in Japan. And there's new Japan travel videos on my channel every Thursday if you want to subscribe. First, we're taking the Hokuto Limited Express from Sapporo to Hakodate. It takes about three and a half hours, but there were some lovely views along the way. This isn't a bullet train, but they're working on one for this route between Sapporo and Hakodate, so in a few years time, this journey will be much quicker. They're aiming to make the whole trip between Tokyo and Sapporo less than five hours. It's not quite as comfortable or spacious as the Shinkansen, the bullet train, but it's not bad. At the moment it's quite crowded because it's Sapporo snow festival time. This is warm coffee in a bottle from the convenience store. You can find it in what looks like a fridge, but it's warm. It's really sweet. I think it's got about 20 sugars. We changed at Hakodate to the bullet train. This is the Hayabusa and it's the fastest one. The name means peregrine falcon, so it's named after the world's fastest bird. I think the Shinkansen looks really cool. I just love how it looks. This line goes from Hakodate in Hokkaido all the way down to Tokyo, but we'll be getting off at Sendai to go to Matsushima. We just wanted to break up the trip and explore a bit more of Japan on the way. There's actually lots of interesting places in Tohoku along the way. I'd love to see more of them. Now, usually on the bullet train, reserving a seat is optional, but on this train, you have to reserve. You can do it online before you go. It's pretty comfortable on the Shinkansen, so doing a long journey really isn't a problem. We're on here for two hours, 40 minutes from Hakodate to Sendai. And for a long journey, you gotta have snacks. So let's take a look through the Shinkansen. This is a rest area between the carriages. There's places to freshen up. And if you need to make a phone call, this is where you can do it. You have to be quiet when you're in the carriages. This is also the only rubbish bin you'll find on the bullet train. I had to be quiet because there were some people standing there who probably thought I was kind of strange for filming the toilet. From Sendai, it's about half an hour on the local train to Matsushima, which is on the coast. This was quite a long traveling day. We left Sapporo at 10 in the morning and got to Matsushima at quarter to six. But this was one of my favorite places from the trip, so I'm really glad we went. There'll be videos coming up to show you what it's like. We've arrived in Matsushima after about six and a half hours on the train today on the way from Sapporo. It was quite a long journey, but we're here at our hotel, which is the Ichinobo Matsushima, and it's a very big room we've got. This is a much fancier hotel than I would normally book, but I had a voucher, so we splashed out for our final night of the trip. Okay, this was the final night of the trip, but it's not the end of the series. I've mixed it up, so we're not in chronological order anymore. When you first come in, there's this little entranceway. This is the same in Japanese houses. You have a little area by the door where you put your shoes, and then you don't wear your shoes inside the house. And they've given us these slippers to wear inside the room. And we also get these disposable slippers, which he says you can take home with you if you want to. So. It looks like a whole apartment when you're here. <laughs> it's a bit of a strange arrangement for the bathroom. In here, we've got the sink. Hello. <laughs> Here's the um, amenities. You get a ladies set, which is a hairband, a cotton bud, and some cotton wool pads by the look of it. That's what ladies need, apparently. There's some hair brushes. What's this? A hairband, a headband, and some toothbrushes. And then the shower is in here. Let me put the light on and show you. 
The shower is a separate bit on its own with two shower heads, that looks good. That's quite spacious in there. And then the toilet's over here in a little cubicle on its own. And there's some more slippers here to wear in the toilet. <laughs> Here's all of the Japanese toilet buttons there. And this is another quite Japanese thing. When you flush the toilet, the water comes out here as a tap so you can wash your hands. I guess it saves space and saves water as well. This arrangement for the bathroom isn't typical of Japanese hotels at all. Most of the ones I've stayed in have had really tiny bathrooms or those sort of bathroom all in one pods. So this is really different. Now let's go through to the main room. Ooh. And look how big it is. This is massive compared to all the other hotels I've stayed in in Japan. <laughs> but we're not in the city here. It's um, Matsushima is a sort of seaside town and the whole place seems a bit more spacious so far. So it's got a nice sort of traditional Japanese look. In here, there's a fridge style wardrobe. The light comes on when you open the doors and they've given us some pyjamas to wear around the hotel. It says it's okay to wear these outside your room. There's some there. And we also get these stylish waistcoats. <laughs> this hotel's also got an onsen. It's got an outdoor bath on the top floor. So you can wear these as you're going to the onsen or to the bar in the lobby. There's a little area with tatami mats down here by the phone. We've got a little sofa that feels modelling. <laughs> and you can't see at the moment, but this view is amazing. The hotel's got a really nice garden. There's a swimming pool out there. It's February at the moment, so I don't think anyone's going to be using that for a while. But you can see the bridges are lit up. And earlier on, they had flaming torches out there, and it looked really pretty. I don't know if you can see, it's still snowing a bit out there at the moment. And it's quite a big hotel. You can see the rest of the building going around that side. It's the sea over there. Yes, we, it was dark when we arrived, so we haven't seen it yet, but the sea is that way. I'll show you in the morning when it's light. And another unique feature, <laughs> this door here, you think it's a cupboard? No, it's not. It's a mirror that's hidden behind a door for some reason. <laughs> There was a time when I was staying in a hotel and I got up in the night, put the light on, I hadn't realised there was a mirror right beside me and I saw someone standing beside me and it really scared me. So if only I'd had a mirror like this with a door, it wouldn't have been so scary. And around this side of the bed, we've got a sideboard with the tea and coffee making facilities and just some cupboards down here to put stuff in. But we're only here for one night, so I don't think we'll be doing much unpacking. So this is so much bigger than a normal Japanese hotel room and it's really nice. So as I said, this is much fancier than a hotel I'd normally stay in. So I'm really looking forward to breakfast tomorrow morning. There's a buffet and I think it's gonna be really good. There's also an open air onsen on top of the hotel. Now this is February and while it feels warm to us compared to how cold it was in Hokkaido, the temperature is still just above zero degrees C. So we didn't really fancy it but apparently they do also have free ice cream up there. The view was beautiful. This was such a lovely place to stay. You can see some of Matsushima Bay, which is known for hundreds of tiny islands. And there's more of that coming up. Now it's the morning and we're at breakfast. I wish I could show you more of the buffet, but I didn't want to disturb other people having their breakfast. We felt a bit out of place because everyone else was wearing the pajamas and waistcoats from their room. We don't usually have breakfast at the hotel, but they had a really good buffet. A lot of it was cooked fresh and there was a lot of fish. I had udon with sesame dressing. I think it was supposed to be for the salad, but I love sesames. Then we went for a walk outside in the gardens. No one else was out there because it was pretty cold. The garden probably looks better when it's not the middle of winter and everything's a bit more green, but I think it's still a lovely view. Even if I was just there for one night, this was a lovely hotel. I forgot to mention, the other good thing is in the evening they have free beer in the lounge. 
I can't wait to show you the rest of Matsushima. It was really beautiful. Remember to have a look at my designs on cakeswithfaces.co.uk, especially when you're starting your Christmas shopping. And I'll see you next week on Thursday. Thursday.